Hey guys, thanks for uh, checking out this video and uh, for all the amazing, amazingly positive feedback on the, the last video. I really appreciate it and um, I'm glad so many got so much out of it. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to talk about what I'm doing here with this one. Again, uh, everybody or every time I draw, um, I like to uh, just keep it loose, keep it free form at the beginning, and I never really go into detail early on. Um, it's more about blocking in the shapes and the proportions and uh, and figuring that stuff out and then adding adding detail on top. Um, and so here I've, I've blocked in, uh, you know, he's, he's upper body heavy. Uh, I like playing with the uh, with the proportions there, and 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 sometimes having uh, opposites. So really tiny legs holding up a massive body, or um, you know, whereas normally the biceps would be super huge. Sometimes I'll make the forearms super huge, kind of give them the the Popeye thing, and uh, and uh, so yeah, it's uh, it's just a, a matter of making sure that. Before any any sort of details go in, you've blocked in uh, what this uh, what this basic shape is. That way, that when you start adding detail, you know everything's going to be um, everything's going to be solid underneath. It's kind of like uh, you don't lay the bricks first when you're building a house. You you build the framing first, and then you put on the siding and the roof. It's the same thing with the drawing. You don't want to, um, you don't want to start adding details before you've you've put down the the under the under drawing. Uh, what I'm drawing with here is a coal erase pencil, uh, and the reason I use red, I get I got asked, I forget who or where I was asked that, but the reason I use red is because. Um, a friend of mine at Blue Sky Studios used red, and I thought, oh, that's that's nice. Typically, I, I would use blue pencil, and uh, this guy came in. His name's Willie Real. You might be familiar with some of his work, um, but he was always sketching with this vermilion red pencil, and I was like, why do you use red? And he's all, I don't know, just is different, and it feels uh, just feels smoother. I like I like the red, so. I went and bought some red vermilion pencils, and I really never looked back. Up until that point, I was always using um, the blue pencils because my first job in the animation industry was, or first job in, in any art field was working at an animation studio. 20th Century Fox had an animation studio opened up in Phoenix, and uh, um, I grew up in Mesa, Arizona, and on a whim, I guess you could call it. Actually, my art teacher told me to uh, to uh, send my portfolio in. Um, this is my high school art teacher. He said, "You know, Jake, you got a good you got a good portfolio already." Um, granted, I wasn't in high school, but I still would go back and visit this guy after high school because he was really cool, and I just like to stay in touch with him. And I was visiting him, and he's looking at my portfolio while I was working on stuff um, at the community college I went to, Mesa Community College. And he said, um, you know, this is this is good stuff you got in here. You should just give it a shot. I mean, send your portfolio down there and see, see uh, if they'd like it. And what's the worst that could happen? They could say no. And then you just keep working on your portfolio. And I took his advice and I sent it down there. And... Um, they liked it enough to give me a test, and I took a test and passed the test, and um, that's a, actually a much longer story, but um, suffice it to say, I got a job there, and I dropped out of school to take the job, and the industry standard at the time was everyone was using blue pencil, and um, uh 
and so that's what we used. And the reason it blew was it was non-photo reproductive, I guess. You couldn't, when you uh, scanned it or copied it, the blue wouldn't show up, but just the dark, um, the dark lines would show up. And so uh, that's that's what they that's what they used. Uh, nowadays, with scanners and Photoshop, it doesn't matter what color you use, you can edit any anything out. So, um, so anyways, the reason I use red is because of Willie Real. So thanks, Willie. Um, and uh, I actually do like the red because it does bring a little bit more of a underlying pop to the to the drawing. So I guess it's more than just arbitrary. There's some artistic reasons for it. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm actually feeling much better now. In the last video, I was coming down with something, and then between videos, I got better, and now I feel great today. Um, yeah, so I'm inking now and using my Pentel pocket brush, trusty old Pentel. And what I'm doing is I'm just going in and adding, um, I guess you could call it contour line, uh, and it's just line to define define shape and I'm I'm really trying to play with uh, these folds and these wrinkles in this guy and give him uh, and give him a a, uh, a nice wrinkly almost rocky texture to his uh, to his drawing I mean to his body sh shape um, this is a character for my Skull Chaser comic, and the idea with Skull Chaser is that he's a he's a bounty hunter, but he doesn't he doesn't go you know he doesn't chase after guys for uh, for money or for power um, or uh, or any sort of uh, altruistic means. He's He's chasing after these guys for answers because he's trying to figure out his past. He he doesn't know anything uh, about where he came from and why he's here. He doesn't even have a face for Pete's sake, uh, so there's no answers. Um, the only thing that that has answers are the string of bad guys that he's going after, um, because each one of them has a piece of the puzzle. And as he takes them in, one by one, uh, he he interrogates them and wants them to be his, uh, you know, wants to be the guy that, that has the answers. And that's why he's called the, the Skull Chaser, because he's not after the guys in particular or the, the bounty or anything. He's after what's in their head, you know. He wants to know what they know. And... That's where I'm at with it. This Skull Chaser has been an interesting ride because he started out as just a uh, just a cool drawing, and um, a lot of people liked him. And uh, he's one of those characters. The design is such that you instantly, I think, um, he's appealing, and so you instantly are kind of attracted to him. Um, Visually, you want to know what's the story behind this guy, and so um, usually it seems like I'll come up with a cool story idea first, and then have to design a character for it. Actually, I can't say usually. A lot of times, I just design a character first, and then uh, retrofit a story into them. That's what Missile Mouse was, and Hugo Earhart was that too, and. The Antler Boy. You know what? That's what I do. That's the way I work, is I come up with a cool-looking character and then figure out a story. Uh, and s sometimes um, that's hard because, you know, you may not have... You may have a really cool character that doesn't have a cool story. But I think with Skull Chaser, I want to in in infuse it with... Um, I love the uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly stories with Clint Eastwood. 
and the samurai stories that those were based off of. And I want to do kind of a sci-fi version of those things. Uh, so yeah, what I'm doing on the drawing now is I'm um, uh, coloring it with uh, with my um, Copic market markers marker. I'm using an orange one right now. And up until this point, I wasn't sure what this guy was. Um, I, I don't have a ton of Copic markers. I should get a big set, but they're expensive, and I've got to spend my money on other things. But I do have an orange and a red and a blue and a green, and so lately my choices are limited, <laughs> which I think that's something to be said about that, having a limit to your choices, uh, because a lot of creativity can come from um, limiting your, your choices. So I, I gave a base color of orange, and that's when I realized this guy should be a lava monster. That'd be cool for Skull Chaser to, to kind of fight a fire hot lava guy. Um, he does have a, a bad guy who's sort of a, they has to fight who's sort of a, um, abominable snowman type. So let's go the other direction with this guy. Uh, this is my vermilion marker. And what I'm doing now is going in and adding, um, sort of shadowy pieces under each of the, the forms. I'm using the folds and the line work to kind of guide how I should put um, this darker red underneath. Uh, actually, when I was inking, I forgot to mention this, but you, you know I went back in and added some darker spots. Um, those are called occlusion shadows. And when two pieces, objects come in close contact with each other, it gets very dark, light can't get in there. And so when I'm inking, I like to do that in places because it just adds a little more um, depth and I think believability to the to the drawing. You get a little bit of um, darker areas in there. And as you can see with the marker here, it's, is I'm getting really, uh, I'm putting a lot in red towards the bottom there, the character. And that's just because light is going to be hitting the top of them a little bit more than it's going to be hitting the bottom. So, you know, when you're doing a coloring a character, make sure you sort of have a gradient of light as it um, as it goes from the top to the bottom. And that's you know usually what gives it a bit of a more believable feel. Because uh, if everything's evenly lit, then it looks I don't know, plastic -y or or maybe too rendered. Um, so that's why I went dark uh, towards the bottom of them there, instead of the uh, instead of maintaining that light and shadow type of stuff that I did at the top. So yeah, I like how he's turning out. Um, I'm gonna. I want to give him some brighter yellow on the top here. So I'm using uh, a colored, uh, a yellow Prismacolor pencil, but it doesn't seem like it's working. So uh, yeah, it didn't really change anything. So I think what I'm gonna do here is with this uh, my my pencil that I used to sketch it is I'm gonna sort of fill in some of the areas and kind of uh, blend the uh, the two uh, the yellow and the reds together with this and that will give it a little bit more of a I don't know, smooth feeling rounder feeling in places again the camera shaking a little bit just because it's attached to my desk when I could figure out how to I don't know if I need to suspend the camera from the ceiling or <laughs> get a tripod that's not attached to my desk or something uh, then it won't shake as much but I guess it's not too too jarring um, yeah so what this pencil is doing is it's just I'm just blending the 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 light and the dark a little, together a little bit better and I think that adds um, I think it adds a little more uh, texture and 
and just a good better feeling to the to the design to it. Yeah, looks good. Gonna put a little bit darker red down at the bottom here, just to get those feet, um, you know, f really feel like they're down there underneath everything, not getting any light. Uh, one more thing, um, I think a finishing touch is he needs, yeah, he needs a little bit of green in the eye. And I picked green because, again, I have a green marker, <laughs> and I have a blue marker, so it was either green or blue, uh, and I didn't, there's too much red on him, so I wanted to do something that, that, um, is a little bit opposite, so... He gets he gets green in the eyes. Yeah, I think he's done. Yeah, so Skull Chaser is gonna have to fight this guy at some point, and there I go again. I created a character first, and then figured out how to weasel him into the story instead of having a good reason for Skull Chaser to be fighting a lava guy. Um, I guess that's one way to do it. Um, anyway. Thanks for watching the video, and if you guys have any questions, art questions, or career questions, or whatever, um, uh, let me know in the comments, and I'll see if I can answer them in the, uh, in the next video, and if you have any ideas of what I should draw, maybe I'll listen to those ideas, and maybe I'll just draw what I want to, <laughs> all right? Thanks for, uh, thanks for listening and watching. Bye. Hey. You made it to the end of the video. That's awesome. Uh, if you like this and you want to see more, just click that subscribe button. All right, bye.